Hey everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part 14 of my Steins Gate Let's Play. In the last episode, we explored one of the alternate endings, uh, Susa Ha's ending, which uh, was very open-ended, and it got really dark there <laughs> for a little while. So now I'm jumping back, and we're going to continue on with like the canon playthrough of this and see what happens when we tell ourselves not to go after Susa Ha. And uh, I imagine this is going to make a big change in the timeline, and maybe this will change the divergence enough that we could save Myri, but uh, we're just going to have to wait and see, so let's jump in and see what happens next. Alright, four days. It may not sound like much, but in that time we forged a definite bond with Suza. Forget all that! <laughs> to send this email is to sever that bond. I know that. I know that. Can I do it right now? Okay. This is the only chance I have. I set the phone wave to 97 hours ago. This D-mail should arrive a few hours after the first. Now I just need to send it. Alright, here we go. Oh, that didn't pop up before. Maybe it's because it knows that I did the alternate ending? Alright. I'm sure that that didn't happen before. Okay, send. Here we go. I start up the microwave. The discharge begins immediately. I place my thumb on the send button. Nina! Myri's voice is choked with tears. <laughs> Memories flash through my head. あたしが絶対やり遂げるから。それじゃ、35年後に会いましょう。君たちにとっては数時間後か。お願い。未来を変えてほしい。Suzaha, <笑><笑> I've made my choice. Well, I mean I made the other choice first. I won't ask for your forgiveness. Ultimately, I'm doing this to save Myri. But at the same time, the words you spoke on that rooftop are still strong in my heart. You entrusted to me your hope for the future. If I'm to honor that wish and fulfill mine, then the time we spent uh, together can never have happened. Oh, it changed a little bit. It looks like the divergence went up a bit. Chapter 7, Made in Complex. The world shatters into geometric shapes that expand and contract like rubber toys. Light gathers between my eyes. Stars explode behind my eyelids. Gradually, color returns to the world. <coughs> I wait for the vertigo to pass. <coughs> Cold sweat oozes from my temples. Pressing my fist against them, against them, I slowly force the air out of my lungs. Has the world line changed? I, I head to the lounge in order to check the divergence meter. Oh, it's gone! Oh, is it because Suzaha never brought it here in this timeline? I checked the meter a few minutes ago, just before the world line changed. Now it's nowhere to be found. It's like with the uh, the IBN not being where it was supposed to. You change the timeline, obviously things are going to move around. If Suzaha never ended up coming to drop off the divergence reader, then it wouldn't be here, right? I quickly realize what has happened. Suzaha gave me the meter after we stopped her from leaving. My D-mail undid those events. Of course the meter isn't here. A surge of regret seizes my heart. I clenched my teeth and endured his best- Oh, so now he has to go blind and hope- He doesn't have, like, a physical thing to tell him if he's made enough of a change, he just has to hope it did. If nobody else remembers, then I alone will keep these memories of Suzaha alive. I look around the room. Myri and Karisu are on the sofa, dozing on each other's shoulders. Daru, oblivious to the vulnerable high school girls behind him, is playing in a roge on his computer. I take a deep breath and turn on the TV. I flip to a news channel. The world line should have changed. I erased the time we spent with Suzaha. That should have allowed her to leap to 1975 without losing her memories. And the IBN 5100 should be in our hands now. 
We can use it to hack into CERN and erase any data that they intercepted from us. Without that information, Moaka's men won't attack the lab. Myri won't have to die. That's how it should be. Of course, it's never that easy, right? That's how it has to be. Otherwise, why did I sacrifice Yuzaha's dream? The quickest way to confirm the change would be to check for any delays at Akihabara Station. Daru sighs and calls up train information. The world line has changed, which means that our IBN 5100, uh, the IBN 5100 should be in the development room. I hope so, or else I'll be like, shit, now what if it's not? Is it there? Is it there? I head back to search for it. But contrary to my expectations, I can't find it anywhere. God, this must be so annoying for him. It's just like, you just have to like put the pieces together and hope that things turn out the way that you want them to. But then if they don't, you're like, where did I go wrong? What's going on? I look at my watch. It's 7.43 p.m. Moka's men attack at what time again? My heart is pounding like a drum. That D-mail was supposed to fix everything. The trains are moving as scheduled, which means that Moka's men aren't about to attack. So why does it feel like nothing's fixed at all? The IBN 5100's absence is extremely disturbing. I want to sit down and think about where it could have gone, but a voice in my head is screaming that there's no time. I need to calm down. It's hard to think straight after everything that's happened. I check my watch again. 7.46 p.m. Images from the assault flash through my mind. Myri bleeding to death on the floor. The smell of gunpowder in the air. I frantically shake the visions out of my head. I look towards the lab entrance. The door has yet to be kicked in by a team of hitmen. I swallow hard, petrified with terror. Please, don't let anything happen. It's past nine. I peek at the street through the window. Nobody's there. Okarin, Daru's right. I've probably looked out the window 20 times in the past hour. And not a suspicious figure in sight. Moaka's men still haven't arrived. The raid was before 8, if I remember correctly. I think it's safe to say my changes to the past have prevented it from occurring, but has it just delayed Myri's death? Is it just going to happen later? Suzuha's sacrifice was not in vain. I let out a deep breath. I'm sweaty and disgusting. It's like my anxiety has pushed all the sweat out of my body. Mayuri. The two girls woke up from their nap about a half hour ago. Now they're eating cup noodles. Krisu <laughs> looks at me in astonishment like she can't believe her ears. <laughs> <laughs> you should take him seriously when he calls you by your real name. That means that he's like, something's up. And maybe you should listen to him. The train lines running through Akihabara are operating normally. There's no bomb scare and no sign of Moaka or her men. Krisu's taking the Sobu line to the next station. Uh, Ochanomizu, Och while Daru is going to the opposite way, to Shikoyoa. Myri and I are taking the Yamanote line to Ikabukuro, so we part at the train's- at uh, the station's ticket gate. Eh, <laughs> tongue-tied! There are surprisingly few passengers on the train. I guess most of the salarymen are off for the open holiday. Myri is playing a handheld game, the Raynet Kakaru action RPG. On the screen, her character is battling a gigantic Upa. I stand beside her and gaze at her profile, lost in thought. It's the night of the 13th, and Myri's still alive. How many times have I watched her die? How many times have I tasted that despair? No matter what I did, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't save this ditzy childhood friend of mine from death. She died again and again, right before my eyes. But now she's alive. 
standing beside me, playing a game. This is why I sacrificed her memories with Susaha. It was the only way. I'm sorry, Susaha. And thank you. Susaha no longer exists in this time, but I hope my feelings will reach her all the same. Actually, come to think of it, why can't I tell her in person? Where in Akiba could the 50-year-old Susaha be? Oh shit, are we gonna get to see her? Hopefully she didn't die this time, but she never got us the IBN 5100, so she might have still feel like she failed. I'll try asking Tonoji tomorrow. He probably knows Susaha on this world line too. I wonder if Susaha remembers me. Mayuri suddenly lifts her head. She looks at me hesitantly. Her cheeks are slightly pink. I apologize, but keep looking at her. Instead of starting a new game, Mayuri looks at me with concern. I remind myself that Mayuri is more perceptive than she seems. She proved that when she figured out that Daru was Suzuha's father. I don't want to worry her too much. I want Mayuri to smile her usual ditzy smile without a care in the world. After all, it's over now. She's safe. <laughs>。Haven't heard that laugh in a while. <laughs>。本当に無理してない IQ 170を誇るハイロの脳細胞が完璧な計算を叩き出しているのだからな。そっか。でもね、たまにはボケって休むことも必要なんだよ。その方はね、忘れないでね、オカリ。Having said that, Myri returns to her game. I feel cold stares all around me, but I don't care at all. Mayuri is here with me, doing everyday Mayuri things. Ordinary things. Everything is going back to normal. <laughs> when you say that out loud, that just means that something is totally going to happen pretty soon, isn't it? Or not? Okay. Yesterday was my first time home in a while, so I slept like a log in my comfortable bed. It could be because of my mental exhaustion, but that was my best night's sleep in a while. Before heading up to the lab, I stop and stare at the brown tube workshop. The familiar mountain bike is gone. Suzuha liked it so much, she insisted on bringing it with her to 1975. The workshop door opens, and out comes Mr. Braun, rubbing his eyes sleepily. Oh, Okabe. You're a bit of a time. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to do it for a special time for the Gekkyu Brown. One CRT a month? So for one month's work, I get an old television? Hell no. What? Was her existence erased completely? But that's impossible. Oh, <laughs> she's like, she's dead to me. So Suzaha did work here. That fact, the evidence of Suzaha's so sojourn in 2010 still remains on this world line. Tanochi shrugs his shoulders, annoyed. Naturally, he doesn't know about Suzuha's true identity. At this, Tanochi's eyes go wide. 
知り合いだったのかえ、uh oh, uh oh, past tense, past tense. Knew her. This could just be his words like before where he said, Who the hell is、uh, Suzuha? Because I don't think he'd be smiling like that if she killed herself, right? Like he would probably be upset upon hearing the name. その自転車は、スズさんがすっげえ大事にしてたんだよ。晩年は、自分で乗ることはなかったけどな。それでも、週に一度はフレームを磨いてた。処分することもできなくて、結局十年もそこに置いたままだ。俺もできるだけ整備はしてるんだが、さすがにサビが目立ってきてるな。I gently put my hand on the seat. It's warm from sitting out in the sun. I suppose that for a few days, Suzaha was an Akiba. His bicycle existed in two places at the same time. The house isn't as messy inside as I expected, considering the state of the bronze tube workshop. I guess that chipmunk keeps the place clean. A wave of nausea hits me as I recall what Nai did at、uh, Ochonomizu Station. But I tell myself that was just an accident. 
Besides, that incident has already been undone. I just imagine her strolling like, Hi, Daddy, what's up? And then he's like, You murderer! Just like, Okabe just screaming at her. Tenoji Nai has done nothing wrong. Next to the living room is a child's room. There's a child's study desk and a red backpack on the floor. Nai isn't here. Which reminds me, Tenoji's daughter visits the workshop often, but not once have I seen his wife. He couldn't have married Suzaha, could he? I mean, she should have been a lot older than him when they met. Oh my god, how crazy would that be if <laughs> if uh, Nai was her daughter and that's why they got along so well? What? No, that's not that's not possible. But as they say, love knows no bounds. I don't know what's possible in this game, actually. Hmm, I wonder what really happened. I don't know how I'd feel if those two were married. <laughs> it all started when she threw his shirt in his face and he just fell in love from there and he saw her tight tummy, as he called it. That would make Daru Tenochi's father-in-law. Actually, that would be kind of interesting. I turned to the Buddhist altar to pay my respects to Suzuha. There's no picture of her, so there's no way to know what Hashida Suzu looked like at the age of 44. I make an offering of incense to her, then look around the house again. This is the house Suzuha lived in after leaping to 1975. I was like, hey, Tenoji, uh, I know we don't know each other very well, and you're basically my landlord, and, uh, you know, all that stuff, and I've never been in your house, but can I snoop for, like, a little while? But it is weird that, like, so Suzuha, she owned that building, and then she left it to Tenoji, and then left him the house. I was like, how close were they? Maybe they were married, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Is it, were they together? For some reason, Tenoji offers me a beer. When I decline, he shakes his head and starts drinking it himself. Huh? He really doesn't look like someone who lived abroad. <laughs> what if he was like, he said the same thing, I am a cool CRT store owner, son of a bitch. <laughs>。Alright, now's my chance. If I'm gonna ask, it's now or never. <笑>ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。ふふ、ごめん。
ってな。なんだか不思議な人だったぜ。預言者みたいに、これから起きる出来事をピタリピタリと言い当てたりしてな。スーサハ。I just made that connection because Suzuha is voiced by Rika in Higarashi, and Rika also knows about how the future is going to play out. Derp.、Uh, what an am- that's- I can't believe I just made that connection about the two of them, like, knowing about the future. That was probably her way of pr- repaying Tenoji for looking after her, even if it was just for ten days. And so it came full circle. Shikashi, second, and I'm so much. I know what I'm saying. I'm so much. I'm so much. I'm so much. こんな近いところにいたとはそうだちょっと待ったろ Come on, IBN 5100 IBN 5100 Tenochi goes into the child's room next door then returns and places an object on the table or it's the divergence thing Oh Yeah It's Suzuha's divergence meter Before the world line changed it was in the lab But on this world line Suzuha brought the meter with her to 1975 And if she didn't kill herself That means that she does remember this stuff, so hopefully she also has the IBN 5100 hiding somewhere. It's been in this house for 35 years. The tubes read 0.409431%. Divergence has changed, just like Suzaha said. This proves my magic eye reading Steiner does indeed allow me to perceive changes to the world line. But what does 0.409431 mean? I recall what Suzaha said. メーターの数値が 1% を超えたとき、君はベータ世界線にたどり着いたことになる。Does that mean I'm still on the Alpha World Line? それ、何の数字を表してるかわかるか俺にはさっぱりわからなくてな。この10年、その数字からピクリとも変わりやしねただ、スズさんは病床からいつもこのメーターを眺めてた。え上ごとのようにつぶやいてたよ。この数字は変わる前なのかな変わった後なのかな私は変えられたのかなそんな風に一日に何回もな。見てて痛々しいほどだった。I touch the device. Suzaha. In my heart, I reach out to the girl who died ten years ago, to the girl who will be born seven years from now, to the girl who crossed time to save the future. Suzaha. Thanks to you, Myri is safe. Divergence has changed. But we haven't yet reached your ultimate goal 1% divergence. Once that's achieved, the future you dreamed of will become a reality. I will carry on your fight, Suzaha. I promise. I realize I'm crying. Tenoji stares at me for a moment and puts its giant hand on my shoulder. So, no B- IBN 5100? Okari! Mayuri comes out of the ticket gate and walks up to me with an unhurried stride. まさかね、本当に駅まで迎えに来てくれるなんて思わなかった。マユシーはびっくりなのです。人質に逃げられては困るからな。うん、困るよね。それでね、マユシーはとっても嬉しいよ。<笑> I don't quite understand, but whatever. マイリー flashes a carefree smile and walks ahead of me, almost skipping. ねえ。その抱えてる荷物って何ミスターブラウンから譲ってもらったんだ世界線の数値を測ることのできる大パーツなんだぞへえー、なんだかすごそうだねでも世界線の数値って<笑> ?I smile wryly マユリは本当にバカだな<笑> Aww What am I doing? After I left Tenoji's house, I called Myri to ask when she would arrive in Akiba. Then I went to the station to pick her up. Anxiety still smolders in my heart. We managed to survive yesterday, but that doesn't guarantee our safety forever. It's entirely possible for Mocha to attack now, on the afternoon of the 14th. Maybe I'm being overprotective, but I still can't shake the image of Myri's death from my mind. 
I don't ever want to have to go through that again. Mayuri. No response. I look to the side. <laughs> Panicked, I scan the area and catch sight of her wandering towards a newly opened shaped ice stand. That ditz. Can't she tell how worried I am? Kurisu is glaring at me with an iced coffee in her hand. We're in the lab, which appears to have become her second home. I'm sitting at the computer searching for intel on the IBN 5100. I still don't know where it is. I went to Yenabayoshi's shrine this morning, but alas, it wasn't there. Suzuha promised to get one to us somehow, her gift to us from 1975. Without it, we can't hack into CERN's database, meaning we can't achieve divergence over 1%. あんたがマユリをお姫様扱いし始めた件について今日は駅までお迎えに上がってお昼ご飯はドクミまでしてここまでは手をつないで歩いてきたとかああ、そう、キュート。あのね、マユシーはオカリンに愛されちゃってるね
So we still are not able to save Myri if we're not at 1%. But maybe 1% is needed to save Myri and Suzaha. Like maybe Myri's okay for now, but if we want to like save the future, we have to reach that 1%. Oh, then does that mean I haven't saved her? Divergence is still less than 1%. Is the world still converging on Myri's death? Poor Okabe, he just like cannot relax. It can't be. It can't be. I mean, nothing happened yesterday. Myri's here, safe and sound. So nothing will happen to her. It won't. I want to believe that, but the doubt within my heart is growing thick and black. I can hardly think about anything else now. No matter how hard I stare at it, the number on the meter doesn't change a digit. So far, reading Steiner is only activated after we sent uh, past-changing D-mails. What about when I time-leap? The vertigo I feel when I time-leap might be caused by reading Steiner. Or maybe it's just a side effect of the memory transfer. It's impossible to know. In any case, I've prepared for the worst. I've already sent the time-leap machine's timer to send my memories three hours into the past. And with Dara's help, I found a remote for the 42-inch CRT downstairs. Well, there you go. That's good. You don't have to keep breaking into the workshop every time you need to go back in time. Our previous phone wave, name subject to change, experiments, made a hole in the floor. Instead of fixing the hole, I made it bigger. The 42-inch CRT is right under the hole. So if I point the remote at the hole and press the power button, the TV turns on. Uh, I wonder if Mr. Bronze noticed that. Now, should things go wrong, I can time leap at a moment's notice. And I also have future gadget number four, Moed Snake, on hand in case of emergency. Okabe. Karisu enters the development room. Time leap machine no jikken wa shinai nja nakatta no? Moshimo no taki no tame da. Moshimo te? I don't want to answer that. I keep praying my fears will not be realized. It's okay. Everything will be okay. They didn't attack yesterday, so they won't attack today. At the very least, we've changed Myri's fate. But still, I can't help but pray. Please let Myri be safe. Please don't let anything happen. My prayers, uh-oh, go unanswered. Oh, dang. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Oh, shit. Okay, exactly the same thing happens, just at a different time. The door slams open. Five men burst into the lab. I recognize them, the rounders. They aim their guns at us. I freeze. Despair seizes my heart. My worst fears have come true. It's happening exactly the same as before. Only this time, Suzaha isn't here to save us. Even the dark-skinned man's words are the same. Eventually, the unpleasant clack of heels echoes down the hallway. Except, uh, how do they figure this- Okay, so if we didn't have the IBN 5100, we didn't say send that D-mail to, uh- Oh no, that D-mail was just to prevent, uh, Okabe from going after Suzaha. The thing is, they can't go all the way back in time because that D-mail that set them off, like, you know, set them to, uh, realize that they were hacking into CERN was, like, way, way, way back in the past when he sent that thing about, uh, Karisu dying. Which we still need to figure out what's going on with that. What- is, what- we need an answer to that. That very beginning is what timeline was that when Carissa was killed? Time machine. Also, I apologize if you can hear my cat purring in the background. <laughs> of course, she does it while it's all quiet. I suppress my terror and grab Mayuri's arm. Look it up! The crew, uh, crew cut man says something he hasn't before. What do I do? Should I use my concealed moid snake right now? Use it and then time leap? But Myri hasn't been killed yet. There's a chance she might not be killed on this world line. Uh oh. The crew cut man points his gun at me. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, because we don't have Suza here to, to come in and distract. My heartbeat jumps up. Cold sweat breaks out all over my body. Ooh, I wonder if I make a certain decision here. Maybe, oh, maybe Okabe gets killed and then like, oh, and we got to reset. 
because if Okabe dies, then that's it. It cuts off. Uh, you know, I mean, I suppose like Karisu could time leap, but I've only raised my left. I have to use it. I swallow my fear and activate Moad Snake. White smoke instantly fills the room, rendering it impossible to see. The rounders won't be able to aim through this. I have to time leap while it lasts. I grab Myra's hand and fumble through the smoke towards the development room. <laughs> I hear the sounds of guns firing wildly behind me. Uh oh, she died anyway. Suddenly, Myri's arm gets heavy. Yep, she dies no matter what. I trip forward and land on my face. Maya! Our hands were separated in the fall. I grope around and soon find her slender hand. So now, just the sadness comes back, where it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta deal with this again. Ugh. Myri's feeble whisper reaches my ears. Was she hit? Well, this time I'm gonna try to make sure that I don't, uh... <laughs> I actually do something and hopefully I don't go back over and over and over again just replay it and have her get killed again and again. Was she hit? The rounder's blind shot hit Myri? <laughs> Myri's voice quickly fades away. Strength drains from her fingertips. Myri! What? But Myri doesn't answer. I'm sorry, Myri. Once again, I failed to save you. I thought I'd succeeded, but I was wrong. I hear my teeth grinding in my head. <laughs> I hear Karisu and Daru screaming as the gunfire continues. Wow. <laughs> Oh shit, did he get shot? A sharp pain flares at the top of my head. I press down with my hand. It comes away soaked with blood. I think he got shot at the, uh, the initial one too, but not fatally, obviously. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. It feels like someone took a saw to my skull. My ears are ringing. I stumble. I can't stand up straight. I need to get to the time leap machine. I squeeze Myri's limp hand one last time, then crawl to the development room, fumble for the headgear, and put it on. I point the remote at the hole and press the power button. The TV turns on downstairs. I can hear people laughing on the screen. <laughs> Shit. I clench my fists in frustration. The time leap machine is already activated. The discharge phenomenon is starting. The floor begins to shake. Once again, I leap to the past. Oh, I, I'm just hoping, yeah, that I don't have to watch my die like 50 times before we figure something else out. Poor Okabe, just like he just can't relax. It's just he's constantly going to be on edge. <laughs> the world collapses, then reforms. Once again, I feel that odd numbness behind my eyes. The pain at the top of my head is gone. I wipe the sweat off my brow and look around. I can't see Moad Snake's vapor anymore. The air is clear. Karisu is reading a western book like usual. Myri is playing a handheld game while eating a banana. Daru isn't here. I recall him saying he was going out somewhere. My- I quickly swallow my words. When I wave my hand no, Myri tilts her head quizzically then goes back to her game. I sink into the sofa and close my eyes. Somehow I resist the urge to scream in frustration. Once again, talk to Karisu, please. Because you don't have Suzuha to lean on anymore, I have to think. I erased our memories with Suzuha. I changed the world line, but it wasn't enough. The divergence meter still reads 0.4. How do I get that above 1%? Wait, if I try to solve the power- uh, Yes, thank you! Good, it's not taking him 50 leaps to realize this. If I try to solve the problem alone, it'll just end the same way. I need to consult Kurisu. Kurisu. Just come here. I lead her out of the lab. 
We sit on the bench in front of the building. Suzuha's bicycle is still absent. Krisu frowns at her own words. タイムリープをしてきたのね。何を。スズハがジョンタイターだったことは。え?お。クリスゆ where are you going? A date with Christian? I'm jealous. Uh, our relationship is purely professional. She is my assistant, nothing more. Let's see the jealous. Jealous? Do you want to go on a date with me? Oh, we are so sending that. <laughs> when we prevented Suzaha from leaving on August 9th, she ended up staying until August 13th. But that outcome was changed by my last email. That's the other thing about ok Okabe is he has to, every time he time leaps, he has to be like, all right, how much do you know about things? And if you don't, now I have to explain it all to you <laughs> over and over again. What happened during those four lines, on, four days on this world line? Time leap machine was completed. What are you doing? You were the one who finished the work last night, right? Okabe, where did you come from? Today at 8 o'clock. It looks like I'll have to explain everything all over again. Oh, I got a mail. <laughs> I want to go on a date. Would you rather go to Sanbo or Kitchenjiru? <laughs> oh, she does want to go on a date. Cute. I told her about Mayuri's many deaths and about what happened with Suzaha and Moaka. I also gave a summary of what Suzaha told me about the structure of the universe. Kurisu does not appear to doubt my story. What about Ferris? Ferris promised us an IBN 5100. She never delivered. She allowed us to send that, like, I let her send that email and she saved her father because of it. And we didn't get the IBN 5100 because of it. I'm wondering if by bringing her father back, maybe she never ended up with the IBN 5100. We kind of screwed ourselves over. Carisu sums up what I told her. アマネさんの話を逆の視点から考えてみればいい。IBN5100をオカベが手に入れて、セルにあるデータを消すその瞬間が分岐の臨界点なんだと思う。おそらくその瞬間、ダイバージェンスは1%オーバーに達するはず。
すべての D メールを打ち消していけば IBN5100 を俺が柳林神社に見つけた世界線に戻ることができると。Oh, so、Luca's gonna be a boy again. Luca's gonna be a boy again. Ferris will never have her father. Won't have her father back. And, the,、uh, and May Queen will be back. Dara will be so happy. From what I've experienced so far, I'm confident that the IBN 5100's disappearance from the lab wasn't due to theft. After all, I was sleeping at the lab, and whenever I wasn't around, another lab mem was. The lab was occupied every hour of the day. It would have been impossible for somebody to steal that heavy computer without anyone noticing. It makes more sense to assume that a D mail caused us to diverge from the world line where I found the IBN 5100 at Yanabayashi Shrine. あくまで仮説だけど私はあんたの説明だけをもとに判断しているから。Oh, it's sad though. We're just gonna ruin people's dreams like Ferris won't have her dad back. Luca's gonna be a boy. もしあんたが事実誤認をしていたり私を騙そうとしていたり妄想を垂れ流していた場合はこの仮説はあっけなく破綻する。This assistant of mine has no confidence in me at all. この仮説を盲目的に信じてもらっても困る。保険はいくつかあるとはいえ、うかつな行動をとって、もしも罪になってしまったら、マユリを二度と助けられなくなるんだから。I know that. I'd ask for Suzuha's opinion too if she were here, but on this world line, she traveled to 1975 on the night of August 9th. There's no way I can speak to her now. どうして IBN5100 が消えたのかこれまでに送った D メールの中のどれが IBN5100 の消えた原因なのかそれを突き止めるのが会を導くための近道ね I'm pretty sure I'm right about it being Ferris because Ferris was the one I believe who donated the IBN5100 in the first place and maybe she got into retro computers、uh, in the timeline where her father wasn't alive わからないのはマユリの死ぬタイミングがちょうど24時間ずれたことだ確かに気になるな。ダイバージェンスが変わったことが関係してるのかなバタフライエフェクトの可能性がある。それなら、ほんの些細な原因でも、結果には大きな誤差が生じる。<笑>とにかく、慎重な行動が大切。不用意なことはしない方がいい。例えば、一番危険なのは、あんたが死ぬこと。世界線を越えて記憶を継続できるのはおそらく岡部だけだからあんたが死んだらマユリも助けられなくなると思いなさい絶対に死なないでもしかして心配してくれているのかはは何それ誰とくそんなわけないでしょ勘違いするなつまり死ぬなって言ったのはあんたが貴重な被験者だからよ<笑>そそうなの世界線うんぬんはともかくあんたのその何度もタイムリープしていながら記憶が継続してる脳ってのは脳科学史を塗り替えるくらい貴重なサンプルであってあんたの脳をマッピングして一体何がどうなってるのか確かめたい気分よだから引き続き実験をガンガンやってくれると私としても助かるわけタイムリープマシンはいわば私の研究の成果でもあるんだから<笑> uh, what they, What's the uh, term? Uh, the lady doth protest too much? 落ち着け<笑> Crazy turns away with a sour expression This assistant of mine can be difficult sometimes Anyway I consider her, or her hypothesis. In order to return to the world line where I found the IBN 5100 at Yanabayashi Shrine, we need to cancel all the D mails we sent so far. The theory is sound, and I've got nothing else to go on. I checked the clock. It's 6 42 p.m., only one hour until Moaka's raid. I decide to time leap once more to the afternoon of the 13th, just before the time leap machine is completed. Christina, you're going to be able to do it. I take Carisu's hand and grasp it firmly. Oh, 
前にあんたを助けたことなんて私はちっとも覚えてないのよどう責任取ってくれるの Why is she getting mad at me? I just don't understand her. できれば覚えておきたかったそうすればあんたの情けない姿をネタにいつでもプギャーってできたからお前は実に性格が悪いな<笑>あんたが言うな With that, I leap 28 hours into the past. Timely complete. I'm standing in the lab, as usual. My brain feels like it's been pinched. I endure the pain as I check my watch. It's 1 47 p.m. Parisu's almost done with the time leap machine, and Mayuri's almost done with Lukako's costume. They should both be done in about 10 minutes. I leave the lab and sit on the bench in front of the Braun Tube workshop. Let's go over the plan. Cancel all the demails that have changed in the past so f- or that I've changed the past so far. Of course, that includes demails sent by people other than me. Specifically, I'm only concerned with the demails that triggered reading Steiner. We sent several of them as experiments. For example, Operation u r d Stage 2, the Lotto 6 experiment involved one such d m a i l But the real problem is what other people sent. m a y u r i and Kurisu haven't sent any d m a i l s Daru sent his past self a strategy to win the Ferris Cup, but Reading Steiner didn't activate, so divergence must not have changed. That leaves three d m a i l s to deal with those sent by Moaka, Lukako, and Ferris. The most problematic is the one Ferris sent, which is also the most recent. I have no idea what it said, so I don't know how to cancel it. Ferris's d m a i l caused a dramatic change to Akiba. All the Moe stores disappeared. That's my only hand. I forgot Moka sent one too. I'm like, oh, that's. That probably changed, caused a big change in divergence as well. I'm the only one who remembers how things were before the change, so I won't get an answer from Ferris, even if I ask her directly. But still, I have to at least try. I should get in touch with her. Oh! Once again, I feel like these things didn't pop up before, and now they are. Huh. Okay, so this is going to be a change. So let me go ahead and just save right here. Oh, uh, no, I want to go to contacts. Ferris. I haven't talked to her in a while. Oh, what's outgoing? Oh, shoot. Maybe I should have called instead. Oh, please respond. It's Okabe. It's urgent. Contact me. There's no time. <laughs> maybe I should have called her instead of there was no time. Just give it to her straight. I send it. Afterwards, I sit and stare at the screen, waiting. I've already tried sending three mails and calling four or five times, but 30 minutes pass without a single response. Unable to hide my frustration, I storm off towards Ferris' apartment. I arrive at the tall apartment building soaked in sweat. I've been running an awful lot lately. It's made me realize how out of shape I am. I wish I worked out more. This complex has an automatic lock, so I have to call up from the lobby intercom. I enter the number for Ferris's apartment, and a man's calm voice soon replies. Judging by the voice, it's not Ferris's dad, but her butler. ジャンクテルミホさんにお会いしたいんですがそれについてはお答えできませんあなた様がお嬢様にとってこの前しくない人物であるという可能性もありますので毎に一度ここにも遊びに来てますよおっしゃる通りでございますがやはり He's obviously trying to end the conversation, so I panic to get the last word in. Well, that's not going to help your case. He's like, well, obviously, she doesn't want to talk to you then, so I definitely am not going to give you her information. <laughs> Frustrated by this new turn of events, my anger threatens to boil over. Damn inflexible geezer. Hey, no, that's a good butler. He's 
keeping her safety in mind. I leave the lobby. May Queen doesn't exist on this world line. Ferris isn't responding to my calls or emails either. Where could she be? Underneath the incandescent heat of the sun, I suddenly get an idea. Daru, if anyone knows where Ferris is, it'll be that stalker of hers. Huh? It's awfully noisy on the other end of the phone. But I don't care about that. Daru, Ferris is now where you are. ここのあたりはないか。フェイリスタン。1秒でも早く連絡を取りたいのだ。今すぐは無理じゃね。場所さえ教えてくれればいい。フェイリスの行きそうな場所ぐらい。お前なら完璧に把握しているだろう。どこ
I finally realized that the nutcase headbutted me. What the hell? Why would he do that? Did I do something to this guy? Or is he a Ferris hater? <laughs> Anti. Alright, let's check the... Uh... People who post negative comments about someone or something on the internet, they appear in places where fans of those people or others or things gather and provoke them by posting derogatory things. It's not rare for them to cause emotional debate among fans. Oh, maybe he's the one who threatened her on a channel? A channel? I stagger to my feet. I'm guessing he's probably the new... And I'm just like, dude, you may think you're cool, but you're playing a kid's game, essentially, so, uh, whatever. <laughs> the man stops to pick up his hat, which fell off when he headbutted me. That's when I see it. Right on the top of his head, there's a small space devoid of hair. There's no way I could miss it. A bald spot. Trying to act all cool. <laughs> Man with a bald spot who seems to whisper to Gaia to shine more. Orenodatina what the hell is this guy talking about? <laughs> Once again, you know you're weird when even Okabe is like, hmm, this guy is weird. <laughs> He's obviously living in his own stupid world. <laughs> Once again, you're one to talk, Okabe. Orewa Shido. Suji no yon ni ondo no dode. Shido. <laughs> this would be like the equivalent of like a guy who tries to act all cool, but he's like a Yu-Gi-Oh champion, like no, or like a Pokemon like card game champion. Like no offense to people who are into that thing, but it's just like I don't know. I don't think of I don't think of like a hard, you know, badass when I think of like card games. <laughs> When I point out the scientific truth, the man with a bald spot and his lackeys get pissed. This doesn't look good. I don't have time to get into a fight. I decide to stage a tactical retreat. Afterwards, I go to the assembly hall and ask the staff about Ferris. No luck. When I try calling Daru again, he says, maybe she went home already in a bummed out voice. I return to Ferris's apartment building and ring the intercom again. The butler responds once more. It sounds like she's home. The intercom goes silent for a while. And then, the door's automatic do uh, lock opens, allowing me inside the elevator hall. I give him my thanks and hurry into the elevator. I haven't seen her in a while. The butler guides me to the bedroom where Ferris is sitting on the sofa, hugging her knees. She doesn't look up, even when I approach. Ferris, I've met you. She looks exhausted, like all the life has been drained out of her. I've never seen Ferris like this. What is she saying? No, wait. I think I get it. I recall what happened after Ferris's final match in the Raynet Championship. That leather clad asshole called her the former champ. I guess that means she lost, and that's why she's depressed. I feel bad for Ferris, but I don't have time to deal with this. 
フェイリス聞いてくれ Ferris blinks her eyes repeatedly when I grab her by the shoulders but her eyes are glazed and empty of light お前は以前俺たちが発明したタイムマシンで D メールを送ったそのことを覚えているかはにゃ Does she even know there's a time machine? I knew it was useless, but I had to ask. Ferris doesn't remember. In fact, from her perspective, it never happened. How did I explain? I know it's a really cryptic question, but I can't think of a better way. Time machine. Ferris murmurs with a blank expression on her face. Time machine. She repeats the same phrase. Ferris's eyes gradually regain their brightness. And then, all at once. Oh, does she have reading Steiner too? Does she remember? <laughs> Kyoma. Oh, she presses up against me. N She smells good. Oh, don't be weird, dude. Ferris's cat ears tickle my nose. I go stiff, not knowing what to do about this sudden turn of events. Ferris looks up at me. Oh, does she want to use the time machine to go back and win the tournament? She looks so desperate. I feel my heart be、uh, pound faster. Time machine is really real? It's a fact. Ferris stares at me even more intensely, like she's trying to see inside my soul. Just when I get the feeling she believed me way too easily, she suddenly starts clutching her head. Oh my gosh, she does have some sort of reading Steiner esque thing. I knew there was something about Ferris. Or maybe she's just messing with them, but I want to hope she's being truthful. Except it doesn't work like that.、Yeah. She's just playing. Ferris then holds her head and looks at me with tears in her eyes. Does Ferris have reading Steiner too? I don't know. I need to find out, but how? Calm down. I need to think. Should I contact Kurisu? Ooh, maybe I should. Alright, game. Alright, let's go ahead and give Kurisu a call. I guess just to see if,、uh, you know, it's possible. Wait, what? I can't? Ah.、Oh. Am I not on the right path here? I guess not. Or should I. Kyoma. Ferris. Ferris. Ferris continues to cling to me. And all I can do is hold her warm, soft, slender body in my arms. Oh boy. Oh boy, let's come on now. <laughs> let's, let's be, uh. Damn, why didn't I. Why wasn't I able to call Kurisu? I need to make her remember somehow. <laughs> oh. Oh, she does, yeah. She wants to go back. So here I am trying to go and, like, you know, reset the D mails that I sent, and here I am now, and she wants to send another D mail. Like, that's the opposite of what I'm trying to do. She's totally playing me.
Oh, do I have a choice here whether I can let her send an email or not? Because that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to, like, but, ah, uh, damn it, she's got me, like, over the, uh, over the ropes here, where it's like, she's basically, um, blackmailing me. No. <laughs> Don't tell me she just wants to use the time machine to win her Raynet match. Considering her personality, that's actually pretty likely. After all, this is a girl who twists men around her finger. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Damn it, she had me for a second where I'm like, oh my gosh, she actually remembers, but... And then Ferris starts crying into my chest. Yeah, if I was Dara, this would be working, but... Tears emerge from the corners of her eyes. I have no idea what to do in this situation. Judging by her tears, I don't think she's lying. But there's really no basis to the theory that she'll remember if she wins the Raynet tournament. I mean, I don't think winning the Raynet tournament would really cause that much of a change for the worst. So, maybe? I doubt she remembers anything, but I'd be curious to see what happens if she does win, if something does change. Ferris whispers into my ear. Immediately afterward, I feel something warm and wet on my earlobe. Ugh. Ferris brushes her teeth against my ear, sending electricity through my entire body. I quickly pull away from Ferris. That was dangerous. I almost exploded. Ferris tries to throw her arms around me, but I quickly evade. She face she face dives into the sofa awkwardly. <laughs> I'm not good at dealing with Ferris. She's using me here, I'm sure. I'm being tricked, aren't I? I shake my head. Even so, I have no choice but to help her win the tournament. I'll try anything that could possibly yield results. As long as I keep doing that, I'll find a solution eventually. I have to believe that. それでいいな。メールを送るんじゃないのかにゃ。すでにわからぼでは意識を過去へとタイムリープさせることが可能な装置を開発済みだ。すごいにゃ。つまり強くて入ゲームってことだにゃ。えっと、そういうことだ。That
According to Ferris, she lost the match due to cleverly concealed interference from the opposing team. Ferris told me how to counter that, her plan. I wonder if she's right. No, now is not the time to doubt. Ferris said she would arrive at the assembly hall around 12. I head to UPX, making sure to buy sunglasses and earplugs on the way. There's still half an hour before the tournament begins, but there's already a line outside of UPX. I didn't think there would be many participants since it's already the finals, but it turns out there's another tournament for the general public at the same time. The opening act, so to speak. The participants enter the hall through a different entrance than the spectators. I'm at the participant entrance, waiting for Ferris to make her appearance. After about 15 minutes, Ferris appears. She lives right next door to UPX, so she's got a lot of leeway time-wise. She's got her cat ears and her maid outfit on. It feels strange to see her wearing that uniform despite May Queen not existing on this world line. Ferris's eyes open wide when she sees me. I don't have time to be Hoi and Kyoma now. She doesn't look nervous. She peers at me with questioning eyes. I'd better give her the goods before I screw this up. I try handing over the sunglasses and earplugs I bought on the way here, but Ferris pulls back as if gone as if on guard. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> I was like, that sounds like a Hoi and Kyoma thing to me. <laughs> she knows? How? Come on, dude. She's totally playing along. Why? <laughs> Don't forget, this is Ferris Nyanyan we're dealing with.俺は確かに今日の夕方6時から飛んできたんだよ。今日のライネットグラちゃん決勝の結果を俺は知っている。聞かなくてもわかるにゃ。フェイリスの圧勝。いいや。お前は負けた。にゃー。フェイリス。だ
らフェリスは負けないにゃそれにそんなキモいメガネなんてかけたくないにゃフェイリスは常に可愛いからこそファンのみんなに喜んでもらえてるのにゃ Crap, she's getting angry at me now. Ferris shakes me off and runs to the participant entrance. I'm not a participant, so she makes it inside. That's the end of it. <laughs> Bearing the pain in my shin, I force my way in front of Ferris and stand in her way. Ferris, please! This is what I'm going to do! Who? 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 Ferris suddenly starts shouting. She grabs the attention of the surrounding participants and spectators. Even staff members are gathering. Crap, I can't talk about time machines or Myri's life with this much attention around us. But I, unless I get Ferris to listen to me, there's no way I can undo her D now. What should I do? Alright. <laughs> I know that there's all this going on, but I have a text <laughs> to respond to. Myri. This morning, I couldn't find Pockety. I almost started crying. The sound of its ticking calms me down. If I lost it, it would be a big shock. I don't know how I'd apologize to Granny if I was, um, I was relieved to find Pockety safe and sound. <laughs> it's like, I know I'm about to probably get beat up by a bunch of people for harassing Ferris, but are you talking about your pocket watch? I thought I told you to stop with a weird naming scheme of yours. Be careful that secret ability of yours. Um, unlimited clockworks is a double-edged sword. Uh, you used to take naps on your grandmother's lap, didn't you? Uh, let's talk about Pockety. There we go. All right, back to uh, what's going on right now. So obviously this is that weird bald spot guy, and maybe maybe she'll uh, listen to me if he says something that, uh, you know, might tip her off. That smug voice. A tall man dressed entirely in black walks up to us with a grin on his face. Whenever he takes a step, all of his silver accessories jingle. He dramatically takes off his sunglasses, revealing the face of a guy who gave me trouble before. If I'm not mistaken, he calls himself Four Degrees or something like that. ふん。ストリートに舞い降りたライネッター界の黒いクジャク。ケン、俺の名はシド。数字の4に温度の度でシド。バイラルアタッカーズのリーダーをやってる。what is it with guys named Shido and being jerks? It's like whenever I see like a sh if, now if there's anyone named Shido, I'm gonna immediately be on guard. Viral attackers. The viral attackers. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's right. They're Ferris's op opponents this match. They're trying to start a fight now. This is the guy who headbutts people out of nowhere, and he seems to hate Ferris for some reason. Majina hanashi, gakkari daze champion. てめえが体勢にこびた格好してるだけでも俺の心はざわつくってのによそのくせ決勝前にヘボそうな男との汚れた愛に浸ってるとはなシャムネコを気取ってるてめえの白い毛並みを俺が今日のデュエルに漆
The promotional posters all have a blue and white motif. It doesn't look like black is the image color to me. Four degrees approaches me. I'm just gonna call him 4C. 4C approaches with an angry look on his face. But I'm the one who should be angry. Myri's life hangs in the balance. Ferris isn't cooperating either. I can't believe this is happening. How can I get this guy to go away? After a moment's consideration, I decide to face him as Hoi and Kiyoma. She's like, I'll, he's like, I'll outweird you. <laughs> I hear giggles from all around. What the hell is a Lamal? Oh. <laughs> oh, shots fired. この俺のマインドに新刊が走ったぜ。てめえ、俺のあんたっちゃぶるな黒点をなぜ知っている誰にも喋ったことはねえのに。4Cs he puts on his sunglasses and leaves. Considering this pay or consider this payback for the headbutt. Kyoma! There we go. Maybe you'll believe me now about me coming from the future. Oh. それより。頼むフェイリス。これを受け取ってほしい。とにかく持っているだけでいいんだ。で、でもフェイリスが負けるなんてありえないにゃ。実力ではお前が上だ。だが。今話して分かっただろ。奴らは明らかに度胸どもだ。来年たにふさわしくない行動も勝つためなら平気でやってくるぞ。そこまで言うなら。Looks like my desperation paid off. Paris reluctantly accepts the two items I present to her. Of course, she doesn't take them out of the bag. 本当に持つだけにゃ。それでいいかにゃ。ああ。決勝戦で絶対に必要になるから。Sooner or later, she won't have a choice. Oh, I wish I could see this play out, but I won't be able to go- Oh, I can go in? The theme song to Rain at Kakaru plays through the hall, signaling the start of the finals. There's a kind of majesty to the scene. The tension of the crowd peaks as its voltage reaches a, clim a climax. ライネットアクセスバトラーズグランドチャンピオンの座を決める決勝戦を開始しますまずは我らが女王前回大会のディフェンディングチャンピオン燃えるメイドインキャット <laughs> wow. Jeez. Ferris makes her entrance to thunderous cheering. She smiles brightly and waves to the audience. She really is like a queen. I notice she's not wearing the sunglasses I gave her. The 
viral attackers consist of 4C and some short guy with the same black leather fetish. They look like a couple of punks straight out of Ikebukuro. I sit in stupefied awe as the excitement around me builds. Daru taps me on the shoulder. Oblivious to my anxiety, Daru starts jumping and waving his hands in the air. Cameras flash as everyone tries to get a picture of the cat girl. The speakers carry her cute, cheerful voice to every corner of the hall. Apparently, they give microphones to both teams so that they can talk to the audience. <laughs> Ferris puts on an impish smile and turns to the audience in a sexy pose. Whoosh! Or whoa! <laughs> the entire hall shakes with the audience's roar. Ferris's popularity is overwhelming. Dara has totally lost it. <laughs> well, we know that she's not his wife, so I wonder if Ferris will be all right. Judging from her enthusiasm, it certainly looks like she'll be fine. Once the cheering dies down, I speak to Daru. No. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I'm like, that doesn't seem fair. I'm not familiar with the rules of Brainnet access battlers. I had Daru explain them before the funnel started, but he only covered the basics. Mayuri, it's a pocket watch, so pockety. It's cute and easy to understand, so I think it's a good name. Hmm, <laughs> I'm かなり攻撃的な戦術を取るチームらしいよ。ただそれ以上に、うさんくさい噂をよく聞くんだよね。秋葉とか池袋とかによく出没して、お宅狩りまでしてるとも言われてるし、とにかくライネッターからはすごく嫌われてるのだぜ。そんな奴らがなぜ野放しになってる。そりゃ証拠がないからっしょ。ライネッター
The referee shout signals the start of the game. The room erupts in cheers. First up is Ferris. The huge monitor hanging from the ceiling displays the circuit mat, the thing looks, that looks like a chessboard. The cards glitter and sparkle in the stage lights. All cards on the board are face down, but each player is allowed to peek at his or her own cards. The cameras are oriented in a way that the audience can't see what cards they have. According to Daru, Raynet Access Battlers is a game of psychological warfare. It's all about figuring out where your opponent has placed his cards. Each player starts with four link cards and four virus cards for a total of eight cards face down on the board. The victory conditions are a little complex, but in short, you win if you take four of your opponent's link cards or if you make your opponent take four of your virus cards. The game starts with each player trying to figure out how the other has placed his or her cards. Knowing your opponent's layout lets you shift the game to your advantage. That's why it's important to be careful what moves you make, whether you're attacking or defending. Your dual partner's there to make it harder for your opponent to read your thoughts. I watch as the duel between Ferris and the viral attackers unfolds before my eyes. Every time a link card or virus card is revealed, a wave of excitement ripples through the audience. I'm starting to understand just how amazing Ferris must be to become a champion all by herself. The audience is on the edge of their seats. As best as I can tell, it looks like the viral attackers are, true to their name, on the attack. フェイリスは、どんな作戦で行く気なんだろうか。フェイリスさんはスロースターターっつうか。前半は相手のカードを見極めることに重点を置くから、結構慎重なんだ。その代わり、終盤になるといつも大逆転しちゃってるのさ。
でもああやって相手にプレッシャーを与えていくのもライネットじゃ結構重要なんだよねいかに相手を動揺させるかっつうのそこから相手のカードの配置も読めるわけで意外と殺伐としたゲームなのか実はライネットって子供より大人に人気あるんだおアニメだってさ絵柄は子供向けなんだけどストーリーは結構ハード路線なのだぜそしてキラリちゃんは超エロい、like、I care, Perv. Only three minutes have passed since the start of the duel, and Ferris is already frowning. She's also fidgeting in her seat as if there's something bothering her. What? Laser Gosen? Eh? Nanzo? Ferris no meno atari o miro! Akai Gosen ga! It appears in short intervals, so it's difficult to spot, but there's definitely a laser shining in Ferris's eyes. Majide? Dara stares at her eyes for a few seconds and shakes his head. Dame da! Wakan ne! でももしオカリンが見たのが本当だったら客席のどこかにいるやつらの妨害行為だおバイラル許せんレフェリーはなぜやめさせないんだレフェリーが見てないタイミングを見計らってるのかも The audience is huge. It's impossible to tell where the beam is coming from. There could be multiple lasers for all I know. Now I get it. This is why Ferris asked me to bring her sunglasses before a time leaked. Put on the damn sunglasses, Ferris. Alas, my telepathic message doesn't reach her. I clench my teeth and stand up. Jo, Okari! Do. Viral no tester do mo sagasu. Bogai koi o yame saseru nda. Kore dake hito ga iru nja, mitsukari ko naku ne. I ignore Daru and begin wading through the sea of spectators in search of my target. Meanwhile, the game is still proceeding. Ferris takes the card she used for her first attack, and instead of sending it into enemy territory for another attack, pulls it back to fortify her defenses. The virals respond by unleashing a massive assault on her line. They equip a card with line boost, which allows it to move twice, move it twice, and then unequip it. Then they equip line boost to another card and move that. It looks like their strategy is to attack in waves. They even seem willing to make sacrifices to a certain extent. And of course, the virals are most likely attacking with a mix of both li、uh, link cards and virus cards. In order to survive the onslaught, Ferris is forced to capture some of their cards in retaliation, but each virus card she's tricked into taking puts her even more at a disadvantage. Ferris looks very unsettled by Forcey's unpleasant smile. The laser attacks must be getting to her as well. And finally, she makes a careless move that truly seems desperate. Disbelief spreads through the hall. Oi, oi, oi! Fucking cat, wa! どうやら俺の伊達丸カリスマオーラにビビってクールなハートを忘れてるみたいだなまさかチャンピオンが素人みたいな手に出るとはな<笑>アマチュアッシュ I was too busy searching for the viral underlings in the audience to even pay attention to the match but this new turn of events causes me to look up to the monitor Ferris has moved one of her pieces to the other side of the board the entrance to the viral attacker's server But the virals must have used their virus checker card because Ferris's card is face up. It's a virus card. Every card you send into enemy server is added to your total. Normally, you try to get link cards through, as that brings you closer to victory. However, you're not required to reveal any cards you successfully send into your enemy server, so although it hurts your point total, you technically can send virus cards into your enemy server. But for some strange reason, Ferris is trying to send a revealed virus card into her enemy server. Even if it gets through, she won't be fooling anyone. Moreover, Ferris has already taken three virus cards, one more, and she'll lose. So she can't send that card through even if she wants to. So, what exactly was she trying to accomplish? Is she really that distracted by the laser beam? <laughs> <laughs> Someone in the audience echoes Forcey's vulgar laughter. So that's where his underlings are. I push my way through the audience in the direction of the laughter. The rest of the audience starts booing. I guess most r a y n e t t e r s really do hate the virals. But Ferris herself doesn't respond to Forcey's taunts. She just bites her lip and closes her eyes. Come on, just put on the sunglasses. 
If only I'd gotten her cuter glasses, maybe she'd do it. This cute thing's only policy of hers is going to cost her the match. Or maybe... Maybe it's impossible to prevent Ferris from losing. Maybe Convergence will bring about the same result, just as Myri is doomed to die no matter what I change. The audience gasps. The Virals have snatched a Link card from Ferris. Now they have a total of two Link cards. I can feel it. Ferris is losing. But just then, I catch sight of a few guys dressed in all black. One of them is Serp- Uh, Sereptis- Uh, Sereptisously- Eh, yeah, I don't know that word. Uh, aiming a pen-shaped object at the stage. It's him. I grab his wrist. <laughs> what? Oh. I thrust something into his side. It's future gadget number one, the bit particle gun. I remembered how this bluff worked with Moaka on a previous world line, so I brought it just in case. The man freezes. I guess he didn't expect to be held at gunpoint at a children's card game event. Taking advantage of his surprise, I snatch the laser pointer out of his hand, then disappear back into the crowd. The punk starts shouting, but gives up when he can't find me. Good. That takes care of the laser. Now Ferris can focus on the game. A scream goes up from the audience. 4C has snatched another of Ferris's link cards. That's the third one. The virals just need one more to win. Farrah still doesn't respond. She hasn't said a word since the match started. But I got rid of the interference, so Farrah should come up with a reversal any second now. I doubt it. I think she's gonna lose. I stare at her, praying for a miracle. And when I do, Ferris once again turns her face away, as if trying to avoid something. Is that another laser? What? She does? The audience begins to murmur. If Ferris does, if Ferris does have that kind of power, then it's no wonder she's so good at Raynette. My Chunbyo imagination starts to run wild, but I try my best to keep it suppressed. If Ferris really can see through lies, it would explain why she hated the laser beam attack so much. It would also explain why her moves made so little sense this match. Ferris. Change Director. Change Directory is a special type of card called a terminal card. Once per game, it allows you to switch the placement of two of your own pieces. Of course, you may also pretend to switch them. Oh, is that why she put the virus card into their thing? She was planning it the whole time. Additionally, if either of the two cards were exposed by Virus Checker, it gets flipped fa face down. I get it. With Change Directory, she can switch out that virus card she placed near the enemy server. And just as expected, Ferris exchanges the virus card with the card that Forcey is surrendered with his hand surrounded with his cards. Or maybe she just pretended to. Either way, nobody knows which card is the Link card and which is the Virus card. Nobody except for Ferris, that is. A pretty interesting ploy. But will it work? The Viral attackers whisper to each other. Once they're finished, 4C returns to the circuit mat with a shit-eating grin on his face. Oreno 
俺のクールなブラックブレインはそれぐらいお見通しなのさというよりも完全にてめえのミスだチャンピオン Without a moment's hesitation, 4C captures the piece Ferris placed next to her server. そいつは序盤、ラインブーストを装備させて、俺に取られるのを覚悟で突撃してきたか。最初に言ったと、臆病な子猫ちゃんが序盤に孤独なリンクカードをさまよわせるなんてありえねえ。つまりちゃん、ダテバル的に考えれば、てめえが持ってるリンクカードは、今交換したカードの方ってことになるのさ。<笑>確かめるまでもない。すでにこの黒のクジャクのセクシャルな瞳には俺のエレガントな少女てめえのクレイジーなカードの中身が見えている交換したうち1枚がウイルスで1枚がリンクそれなら両方取ったって勝つのは俺たち黒の貴公子なんだよ、oh, Are they gonna be both virus cards? Wait, is that right? If the card force he takes now is a link card, then he wins But even if it's a virus card, it'll still be match point, and then he'll know which card to take for sure. It's going to end without Ferris demonstrating any of her power. Card. Open! And the card displayed on the monitor is. Virus card! Is it over? The virals have taken three link cards and three virus cards, match point. But Forcey's right, that doesn't even matter. Ferris only has two cards left. And 4C already knows which is the Link card and which is the Virus card. Ferris's Link card is surrounded by the Virals cards. There's nowhere to run. Does this mean Ferris is going to lose? No way. There's got to be some advice I can give her. Oh, I can't think of anything. Forcey poses as if in ecstasy with both hands stretched wide and his chin cocked up. His attitude disgusts me. I clench my fists. It looks like I'll have no choice but to time leap again and force Ferris to wear the sunglasses. He's totally gonna lose. She's gonna be like, see, I told you I didn't need your help. Yeah. Ferris is back to her usual speech patterns. She's even got a fearless smile on her face. That's not the look of a rain at her facing certain defeat. And then, Ferris pulls something out of her ears. Oh, she was wearing the, the earplugs. Wait, earplugs? Those are the ones I gave her this morning. She wore the earplugs, but not the sunglasses? Why? To catch the opponent unprepared? No way. The card he just took wasn't a link card? チェンジディレクトリでウイルスカードとウイルスカードをあえて交換するように見せかけるなんて無駄なことはあの不利な状況でできるはずがいいからそのカードを早くめくってみるにゃフォーシー slowly flips over the card he took from Ferris the entire audience waits for the card to be revealed and then displayed on the monitor なんとリンクカードだと思われていたそのカードは<笑>ウィルスカード大逆転だ She did it. She really turned defeat into victory. It's like she knew exactly what was going to happen. She was in control of the battle all along. The audience goes wild. Their cheers shake the hall. Winner! Waiting! Congratulations! 
As the hall rocks with the jubilation of the crowd, Daru and I clasp hands and share in the excitement of Ferris's victory. With the tournament over, I wait for Ferris outside the hall. I sent Daru home already. I'll have to tell Ferris about Myri soon, and I don't want him to hear it. Kana! <laughs> Suddenly, Ferris runs up to me, paying no heed to the curious stares of the crowd. She's still in her maid clothes, and she's carrying two bouquets, two bouquets of flowers, which she has received from her adoring fans. You so Fade. <laughs> Ferris jumps at me before I can finish. She jumps into my arms, embracing me, and there's a warm feeling against my cheek. A, a kiss? Was that a kiss? <laughs> Ferris smiles innocently. It's like her entire body is glowing with pure joy. Ferris puts on an impish smile. I forcefully pry Ferris's body off mine. Everyone is staring at us. Ferris bashfully paws at her head. I take that paw of hers and leave the scene. We get to the overpass and finally lose sight of all the tournament spectators. Ferris, this Ferris looks at me in confusion. Ferris正直に言うと、2時間後のお前だ。最初お前はバイラルアタッカーズに引きを立てを使われて負けたんだ。そこでお前は俺にタイムマシンを使ってお前は本来忘れているはずのDメールを使って過去を改変したことについて思い出しそうになっていた。Or she's just saying that because she wants something from you. 来年度の大会に勝てさえすればそれを思い出せると。そう言った。にゃにゃ。どうだ。思い出したか。思い出したと言ってくれ。これは俺にとって重要なことなのだ。Ferris stares into my eyes as if she's looking for something. Then she puts a finger against her lips in thought. Finally, she smiles. Huh?その時のフェイリスはバイラルに負けた落ち込んでたんじゃないかにゃ。だからタイムマシンの話を聞いたらそれを使ってでもなんとか勝ちたいと思うのにゃ。出ないとパパに合わせる顔がないからに
This is the closest I've ever been to Ferris. I'm captivated by the beauty of her features. Wow, her eyelashes are really long. A mathematical theorem stating that for any inter integer n greater than 2, no three integers x, y, and z exist, so that xn plus yn equals zn. The theorem went unsolved for nearly 360 years, but was finally proven in 1995. <laughs> それってまさか今日までだけ特別に教えると実はフェイリスは他人の心理を読み取ることができるのにゃスタンド名はチェシャーブレイク I feel like she's mentioned that before A fictional cat from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland どうにゃすごいにゃ俺にだけ特別って I won't deny the existence of supernatural powers. After all, I have one of my own called Reading Steiner.目の動きとか、表情とか、仕草で、あ、この人は今嘘を言ったってわかるにゃ。もしかしてお前、その能力をライネットの試合にも使っていたのか。そうにゃ。フェイリスはエンターテイナーだにゃ。いつもわざとピ